My analysis on Perfect Blue talked about how tapping into the concept of the Anarch can help one liberate oneself from the forms and labels forced onto you by others. The Anarch, of course, is a philosophical concept that the German writer Ernst Jünger talked most famously in the novel Oymizo. The idea places emphasis on that which preceded the forms. For instance, the fighting that which preceded boxing or the love that preceded marriage. And by doing so, we connect to something that transcends the restricting forms around us. Therefore, in the life that we occupy, there exist certain figures of being that we fit into that, though convenient, puts us at risk of losing ourselves in the first place if we lose touch with the anarchic potential that preceded it. These figures can come in the form of a career, an ideology, or otherwise a specific role in society. Again, I really went in depth about the specifics of the Anarch and its associated liberation in my Perfect Blue video, which you can see here. In any case, it can be said that these ideological and occupational forms that are embodied by members of civil society exist spatially given that they exist across the society that we inhabit in a rather horizontal manner. This is why last week's video was named The Anarch Across Space because it was about finding liberation by no longer agreeing to let the forms define you in your life. But what about the Anarch across another dimension, that is, the concept of being anarchic across time. I already explained how the anarch is the potential that precedes a fixed form of being, existing outside the social order. This doesn't always happen physically, but it does always happen sentimentally, and by doing so, one can free oneself from society. But can one not exist outside of time as well, to free oneself from history? Well, that is precisely what we will go over in this video. Like last time, we will again refer many times to Ernst Jünger's book Oymsville for our ideas of the Anarch, but this time we will put it in the context of a different movie altogether, namely Satoshi Kon's Millennium Actress, where Perfect Blue talked about a protagonist trying to find herself after it was defined by others to fit the needs of those around her, Millennium Actress talks about trying to remember oneself after her identity was forgotten across time. In both cases, the protagonist had to find herself after the medium of acting put her through a state of confusion. In Perfect Blue, the identity had to be affirmed, while in Millennium Actress, it had to be reaffirmed. Therefore, the antagonist in Perfect Blue was the people around her, whereas the antagonist for Millennium Actress was something more ubiquitous and omnipresent, like the concept of aging and supposedly becoming too old for love. In this sense, Mima had to transcend the forms that existed spatially, while Chiyoko, the protagonist for Millennium Actress, had to transcend the forms that existed temporarily. And, of course, because Jünger had to transcend the figures like the worker that existed in society as well as the phenomenon of the decline of culture, which was a trend that existed throughout history, he had to rise beyond both space and time. There are similarities developed early on in their respective lives, when it was thrusted onto world events that marked the beginning of their career. These events happened to center around war. For Jünger, it was during the Great War where he saw his career as a writer take hold, thanks to his book on his life as a frontline soldier called Storm of Steel. Now, on the other hand, Chiyoko's career was found in acting, but it too began in the midst of wartime. It was from here that she quickly became a star in Japanese cinema, playing in roles that spread across 1,000 years of Japanese history, hence the name of the movie, Millennium Actress. What's interesting to note is that though on the surface, Junker went to fight while Chioke went to act, their motives laid beyond the mediums that they lived through. I've already explained how Junker wanted to ex experience war 
as a transcendental ex- experience the way that mystical warriors of the past did and therefore in terms of motives he did not get too bogged down into the conventional notions of patriotism or any other memetics that existed only in his time. In fact, there is a sort of anarchic element in even the phase of Junger's life where he fought as a soldier. If you recall in Oymersville, it is said that the warrior too is anarchic. Therefore, the anarch is not just, contrary to what some may believe, someone that sits in his library and though there are, is an element of the detached assuredness and a secure calmness in Junger's writing, it can also, according to Oymersville, manifest violently with determination and therefore cross any line. And Chioko too went into acting for similar reasons. Again, like Junger, she did not, she did not get too bogged down into the job of acting or any other forms of roles. Unlike Mima from Perfect Blue, Chiyoko was there for something beyond acting, in this case, love. Therefore, both Chiyoko and Junger only used their respective medium of acting and warfare as a means to reach something more transcendental. But in any case, the first sign of transcending the forms that you find yourself in is the transitioning from focusing what keeps you alive for Chiyoko and Junger, this was soldier and acting, to something more ascetic, like what they lived for. And therein lies something more meaningful, and that meaning was what Junger and Chiyoko sought after, except there was just one problem. Yes, by transcending forms, they were able to become anarchic in the spatial sense, but not so much in the temporal sphere, because they still had to live within their own time. See, in the wake of world-changing events, he sought to react to it in his favor. During the liberal democratic era of the Weimar Republic, he wrote collectivist books like The Worker. During the war-torn era of the Second World War, he wrote an essay titled The Peace. And even in his later life, he would talk of the forest passage and the like. All these books can be contrasted with Oymersville because the latter has that timeless quality to it. Its writing was no longer a reaction to a particular point in time. See, the essay on peace feels like the material fit for the time it was written in. On the Marble Cliff feels like it was fit for the time that it was written in. And more importantly, they would feel a bit out of place had they been written at another time. And this is what I mean when I say that Junger, at this earlier stage in his life, had yet to transcend the times. On the other hand, Chiyoko realized at the end of the movie that though she may have transcended beyond the many forms of protagonists that she had embodied all throughout her career, the ascetic ideals that she lived for was still out of her reach. It was at the very end that she managed to give herself the timeless quality that love always had, declaring that Mind you, even transcending space is no small matter as to put it all into perspective, Mima could not even transcend one form until the very end of Perfect Blue. On the other hand, Chiyoko was able to transcend many forms from the very beginning of the movie. This was because she was able to anchor herself into love, which, as you know, is anarchic. Therefore, Mima too must realize that now that she has transcended space in the end of the movie, she must, along with Junger and Chiyoko, transcend the temporal sphere where time will not only become annihilated, but become assimilated into the absolute. And in this timelessness, they will transcend both space and time. Jungers tankevärld är inspirerad av den grekiska mytologin. Han talar ofta om titanerna, ett slags halvgudar med oerhörd makt som alltid legat i strid med gudarna. Titanerna representerar det jordiska och i deras maskinvärld blir människans känslor och drömmar ointressanta. Kanske också medlidandet och kärleken till nästan. 
Allt offras för uppgåendet i det gemensamma framsteget. Jag säger att en ständig växel stattfindet mellan Götterna och Titan. Det har redan längst för de människorna begonnen. Ur den kaos heraus har de sig även dessa tre stora mäktiga som sig avväxlar. Och vi är även vidare med... Was Nietzsche auch sagt, Gott ist tot, die Götter sterben, aber die Titanen werden sehr mächtig. Die Technik ist ja nur ein Kleid, eine Rüstung der Titanen. But where exactly does one go from here? Well, Junger writes again in Eumannsville, It is not that I am waiting a return to the past. I leave those matters politically to the conservatives and cosmically to the stargazers. No, I hope for something equal, nay, stronger, and not just in the human domain. And this is why the Anarch is such a great epilogue for Chiyoko to follow. You see, first you find yourself, like Mima from Perfect Blue, then the self raises itself even higher. Upon becoming meta-historical, one can find freedom in the moment because it seems to lose its past and present. The Anarch becomes timeless and the absolute. There is another great line in the novel where it says, There can be no doubt that the gods have appeared, not only in ancient times but even late in history. They feasted with us and fought at our size. But what good is the splendor of bygone banquets to a starving man? What good is the clinking of gold that a poor man hears through the wall of time? The gods must be called. However, this implies that the banquet can in fact be appreciated by an exceptional few. It implies that the gold can be appreciated as well. And the question I like to ask is, can Chieoko appreciate this? Throughout the novel, Junger talks about the return of the gods, a second coming if you will, that follows when the titans have lost their power. This offers Chieoko a path to a higher life, a life among the divine. 